congratulations on your new Ibex Hops growing system. In this video, we'll walk you through the step-by-step -step installation of your system. As you get your system unpacked, let's take a look at what's included. This first step is important. Remember to call 811 a few days before installation to have the utility companies come out and mark all underground utilities. Proceed with your installation only after the utilities have been located. Remember, a good install is a safe install. To get started, take a look at your space and determine the best location for your system. The more sun your hops plants have, the happier they'll be. And while it's not required, if you can run your trellis in an east-west direction, you'll get maximum sun. Next, to determine the total space needed for your trellis, start with your desired trellis length and add 18 feet to allow for the ground anchors. For example, for a 15-foot system, add 18 feet, 9 feet for the ground anchors on each end, and your total space needed will be 33 feet. For a 30-foot system, the total length needed would be 48 feet. With your total length in mind, it's time to lay out your system. Insert a stake at one end of your total length. This will be the location of your first ground anchor. Now, measure the full length of your system and place the second stake. This will be the location of your other ground anchor. Now, stretch a string between the two stakes, pull it tight, and tie it. This string establishes the straight line you'll use to install the other trellis components. Landscape cloth can help control weeds. If you choose to use it, unroll it along the stretched string and cut to the proper length. To determine the correct length, start with the full length of your system, including the ground anchors, and add an extra six inches on each end, which will be folded under. So for a 15 foot trellis, with a total length of 33 feet, you'll need 34 feet of landscape cloth. For a 30-foot trellis with a total length of 48 feet, you'd need 49 feet of cloth. Now unfold the cloth to its full width. With help from a friend, slide it under the stretched string. Align the yellow center line on the cloth directly under the string. Keeping the landscape cloth taut as you work, fasten it to the ground using landscape staples. Secure the fabric with four staples on each end and a staple about every two feet along each side. Now measure between your end stakes and determine the center point. Mark this location with one of the supplied flags. From the center point, measure in each direction a distance equal to half the length of your final trellis and mark those locations with flags. For example, if you're installing a 15-foot trellis, you'd measure seven feet, six inches in each direction from the center point. For a 30-foot trellis, you'd measure 15 feet in each direction. These will be the locations of the ground posts for your trellis. Mark the locations of your end stakes with the supplied flags. Then you can remove the stakes and the string. You've successfully marked the locations of the two ground posts plus the ground anchors at each end. Next, using a utility knife, cut two inch holes at the locations of the two center flags. Remove each flag, and using a drill and the supplied auger bit, drill the holes for the ground posts. Make sure to drill down the full length of the auger bit. Be sure to keep the bit straight up and down. It may help to have someone observe as you drill to ensure the bit doesn't lean, or check the bit for plumb using the included level. To make installation easier, once the holes are drilled to the full depth, it may help to move the bit around to widen the holes slightly. Place the lower portion of the first post into the ground, making sure the holes in the post are in line with the length of the trellis. Insert the hammer cap into the top of the post. Using a sledgehammer, carefully drive the post into the ground until the mark on the side of the post is level with the surface. As you're driving the post, check regularly with the level to ensure the post is plumb and has not rotated. Repeat this process for the other post. With the ground post installed, it's time to add your post stabilizers. You'll need two short or one long stabilizer per side. Slide the stabilizers over each ground post. For now, you'll simply add the stabilizers to the posts, but won't hammer them into the ground. 
Once the stabilizers are in place, install the end caps on the ground posts. Next, you'll install two side plates onto the top of each ground post. The outer and inner plates are different. As you look at each plate, make sure the cutout IBEX logo is situated in the lower left corner and reads correctly. Position the two plates on either side of the vertical ground post. Insert bolts through each of the holes shown. The bolts should extend through both plates. Add a washer and a nut to each bolt and make each nut snug using a 7 16 inch wrench or ratchet in a socket. The bolt head should be against the outer plate and the nut with washer should be against the inner plate. Repeat this process for the other ground post. Now you can position the upper portion of the first trellis arm between the side plates as shown. It should initially be installed in the down position. Orient and install with the lower and upper cable stay flanges facing outward. Insert a bolt through the outer plate and the trellis arm as shown. Add a washer and nut on the inside. Snug the nut using a 7 16 inch wrench or socket. Repeat this process on the other side. Now measure the distance between the two ground posts at ground level. Then measure the distance at the ends of the trellis arms. These measurements should be the same. If they aren't, adjust the posts so the measurements match and ensure each post is plumb using the level. Now with your measurements matching, it's time to hammer in the post stabilizers. If you're using a landscape fabric, use a utility knife to cut a four inch slit in the fabric on either side of the first ground post. Using a hammer or mallet, pound the first set of stabilizers into the ground until flush with the surface. As you're hammering, alternate sides to make sure they go in straight. Repeat this process on the other vertical post. Now you're ready to install the fixed poly blocks that the rotating arms will rest against. You'll need two blocks, front and rear, on each trellis assembly. Raise the first trellis arm to the upright position and insert the front block between the side plates. Align the hole in the block with the hole in the side plates as shown. Insert a bolt through the outer side plate and secure it on the inside with a washer and nut, snug tight with a 7 16 inch wrench or socket. Next, place the rear block between the side plates and secure it in the same manner. Repeat this process to install the blocks on the other trellis assembly. Next, you'll install a ground anchor at each end of the trellis. The anchors will be installed at the locations of the outermost flags, nine feet from each of the ground posts. Insert the pointed end of the first anchor into the ground at the location of the flag. Insert the anchor driving rod into the hole in the anchor and use a sledgehammer to drive the anchor into the ground until the loop is flush with the surface. Now you'll pull up firmly on the ground anchor to set the anchor. You should feel it move into place. Repeat this process for the other ground anchor. Now you're ready to install the cables that connect the ground anchors to the trellis. Insert the 15 foot upper ground anchor cable through the top cable stay on the trellis arm. Pull the cable through, leaving three to four inches of cable on the inside of the trellis arm. Insert the other end of the upper ground anchor cable through the gripple cable connector attached to the end of the lower ground anchor cable. Pull the cable, leaving three to four inches of cable sticking through, but don't tighten the cable yet. Repeat this process to install the anchor cables on the other end of the trellis. Next, you'll install the front and rear removable blocks that support the upper trellis arm when it's in its fully upright position. With the trellis arm in the upright position, insert the front block between the side plates and align the hole with the hole in the plate as shown. Secure the block with one of the removable detent pins. Insert the rear block in the same manner. Repeat this process for the other end of the trellis. With the trellis arms in the fully upright position, check the first arm with a level to make sure it's plumb. Have a helper pull the upper ground anchor cable through the cable connector to remove the slack. Repeat this for the other trellis arm. Now you'll install the upper and lower support cables which will support your hops. Remove the pins from the front removable blocks on each end of the trellis and rotate the trellis arms downward. Beginning with the lower support cable, insert one end of the cable into the bottom wire stay on the trellis arm. Insert from the inside of the arm and pull until approximately three to four inches of cable is sticking through. Insert the other end of the cable into the corresponding wire stay on the other end of the trellis and pull it through, but don't tighten the cable yet. Leave excess cable sticking through. 
Repeat this process to install the upper support cable. With both support cables installed, measure the distance between the ends of the upper trellis arms. Make sure this distance matches the distance between the ground posts at ground level. Once the measurements match, hold the trellis arms in that position and pull the loose ends of the cable to tighten the upper support cable. You can now trim off excess cable, leaving six to eight inches on each end. Finally, rotate the trellis into the up position. Now you can tighten the lower support cable and trim off excess cable, leaving six to eight inches on each end. You'll now install the tie back cables that help support the trellis. Rotate the trellis arms to the down position. Insert a 13 foot coated cable into the cable stay as shown, leaving three to four inches sticking through. Install the three foot cable with a red sticker by clipping the attached carabiner onto the ground anchor spring. Now connect the 13 foot and three foot cables with the gripple cable connector, but don't tighten the cables yet. Repeat this process for the other tieback cable. Now move the gripple connector up the long 13 foot cable until the cables are taut. Remove the slack from the connected cables on each end. Next, unhook the carabiners and rotate the trellis arms up past vertical and rest them on the rear blocks. Attach the remaining short three foot cables to the ground anchor springs using the carabiners. Slide another gripple cable connector onto the 13 foot cable Keeping it five to six inches away, now slide the loose end of the three foot cable through the connector, but don't tighten the cables yet. Repeat this process for the other tie back cable. Now you can remove the slack from the cables, evenly on both ends, until the cables are taut. Next, you'll install the wires on which your hot binds will climb. Determine how many bind wires you'll be using for your installation. We recommend using a minimum of three wires per hot plant spaced about 12 inches apart. With the trellis in the down position, attach the end of a bind wire to the top support cable using one of the provided spring clips. To do so, place the clip over the support cable and slightly compress. Stick the end of the wire up through the bottom hole in the clip and out the top hole. Leave about two to three inches of wire sticking out the top. Attach the wire to the lower support cable in the same way. To position the bind wire, compress the spring clip and slide it in the bind wire along the support cable. Repeat this process for each of your wires, allowing adequate space between each of your hot plants. Now you can disconnect the tie back cables from the ground anchors and raise the trellis to the up position. To finish, just push the excess length of the bind wires into the soil to position and secure them. Congratulations, your installation is complete. You're ready for hot plants.